Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And today we're going to be tackling uh, potential primary challengers for the 10 uh, Republicans that voted to impeach the president. We're about to see what exactly type of candidates would be good fits for the district. How can we actually win while preserving the Trump agenda in some of these districts as well? Uh, I'm about to dive into it in a minute. But first, I have to tell you guys about my friends over at Noble Gold. Now, a brand new year deserves a fresh start, right? A new look at everything. There's going to be a new administration in Washington. So it might be time to look at Noble Gold's security option. Yes, security. It's like damp proofing, but it keeps the government from your savings like the damp from your floors. How? By using gold and silver in your own IRA. You insulate it from the markets, and if anything bad happens, you're safe and dry. COVID, market crash, vaccination worries, you're going to be fine. Remember, if you want to play it safe and protect your investments, take out a gold IRA this month, and Noble Gold will gift this stunning solid silver 5-ounce Apollo 11 commemorative coin from the U.S. Mint. It's quite something, I'll tell you. So visit noblegoldinvestments.com right now and find more about your future proofing for your investments. So we have 10 districts here, and we're going to explore primary challengers. So I did want to put out a disclaimer because there is a significant minority of, of my support base here that believes that voting is now useless. And while I understand the concerns and while I wouldn't want anybody to vote for an establishment Republican ever again after this fiasco, uh, I would also like to say that it's not impossible that we're able to to win elections here. Obviously, you look at North Carolina. We will be able to defeat the system in 2022 if we turn out in high enough numbers and rework the voting system, uh, reduce the vote-by-mail uh, system uh, influence that we currently have. And in the meantime, it's important to understand that we knocked off a few Republicans in the primary elections, most of which did use vote by mail. Uh, Lauren Boebert comes to mind. She knocked off a neocon in Colorado's 3rd Congressional District, and she won fairly convincingly. She won by 10,000 votes in the primary, and she won the general election by six percentage points. She actually won the general election by a decent margin in a swing district. So it's not like it's impossible for Republicans to win elections. It's not even impossible for the right kind of Republicans to win elections in the future. But we have to vote for people in 2022 that are going to clean up the voting system. This was a disaster, this election cycle. Um, it took weeks upon end. We're still, I think, counting ballots in New York. This was a terribly conducted election, no matter how you want to spin it. Uh, it was abysmal. We're still counting ballots. That already tells you something, um, that we don't even have a winner out of New York's 22nd. But what I will say is that 2022 is probably the prime opportunity for primary challenges, especially with the anger and the grassroots within the Republican Party. And it will be able to be similar to a Tea Party style movement, uh, except one that's more America first than just, you know, fiscal conservatism with populist rhetoric here and there, which, you know, the Tea Party was about. So I wanted to talk about the 10 districts here. Um, obviously, some of these are, are um, in places like the Rust Belt, Ohio, Michigan, Illinois. Others are in places like Washington, California. Some of these were Trump-heavy districts. Others were actually districts that favored Joe Biden. Uh, so we're going to go through this and, and uh, look at this and see exactly what types of Republicans are going to be able to win. So it's important that we start off with Michigan's uh, 6th congressional district. Fred Upton's been there for a while, and he has uh, been quite a swamp creature. Um, this is a district that is largely white. It is largely white working class. This is where, you know, a Trumpian candidate could thrive. It is an R plus four district. However, it has been getting redder and redder as time goes on. Uh, Donald Trump won the district by eight points in 2016. He won it by a little bit less than that in uh, 2020. But a Trumpian candidate can do very well in this district. The only real urban area is Kalamazoo, and there's still a decent working class population there as well. So it's important that you stress a protectionism, you know, if you have a candidate that is going to run there. I don't really have names in these districts. Um, we will get names probably as time goes on. But it is possible this is a, a district that is largely white working class and a type of district where a Trumpian candidate will thrive. Although since there are some, you know, suburban areas and, you know, south of Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, you need somebody that still has the optics 
that can still appeal to to some of the more you know normie con establishment Republicans, even though they're not establishment Republicans. Because if you want to take them down in the primary, we probably don't need them. But at the same time, it's important that you have to have somebody that will peel off some uh, voters that would originally have gone to Fred Upton in a standard typical primary. Um, Michigan's third district is another district. This district, a lot of it is Grand Rapids, suburban Grand Rapids. This was Amash's district. Peter Meyer has been a major letdown so far. I believe he was out there supporting Donald Trump uh, in the primary for him. And then he turns his back on the president. Well, the district will likely turn its back on him. Now, there already is a challenger in this district, Tom Norton. Uh, it seems like a great candidate in terms of policy. He is running on an immigration moratorium, which is something that I think we desperately need in this country. Um, so it would be interesting to look into his prospects uh, in the district. I don't know if this district is one that would vote for an America First Republican first and foremost. I think that if Norton was running in the uh, in in Upton's district, he would have a much better shot at the primary and the general. But the fact is, Meyer has made a lot of his constituents in the party angry. And as a result, it seems like he may lose his primary, even if it is to Norton, but we'll see if there's any other individuals as well. Um, looking at South Carolina's 7th Congressional District, um, this is a surprising one that Tom Rice would vote to impeach. This is a district that Donald Trump won by 19 points twice. Uh, Mitt Romney in 2012 only won it by 10. So looking at that fact alone, this is a district in a ruby red state that is trending, moving to the right, and the district decided to impeach Trump. Uh, it is important that we get the best candidate that we can do. An America First candidate would do great in South Carolina's 7th Congressional District. I don't know exactly who is going to run against Tom Rice, but pretty much any type of conservative would do well. So hopefully we can get an America First type of, a, of Trumpian conservative in this district, especially as it is one where Donald Trump did much better uh, in 2016 than Mitt Romney did in 2012. And you have a candidate like Rice who is acting like Romney in the House. He could easily get primaried out of there, especially in a more grassroots environment, which I do believe 2022 is going to be one. Um, so that's it for that district. Wyoming at large, Liz Cheney. Uh, I don't know anybody in Wyoming that uh, is a high-profile candidate to primary Liz Cheney. I don't even know if Liz Cheney is going to run for re-election. Uh, Wyoming is a very rural state. It is a very white state, um, the largest minority being Hispanics, which probably actually end up voting Republican in the state, uh, given the fact that the state has a massively R partisan lean. The problem with Wyoming is the fact that there is a good portion of the electorate that is, you know, the establishment Republicans, whether they're the uh, the Mormon base in the Mormon belt or whether they live in places like Cheyenne. Uh, but at the same time, it, it is a very Republican state, and Trump has a decent support base there. Uh, he got in the state 70% of the vote or so this time around. So Liz Cheney probably, I believe, would lose a primary. Uh, it's important we get the right candidate. A lot of people are saying Kanye, but uh, at the same time, I don't think people understand that Kanye is just a meme. He's never going to be elected to any form of political office in his lifetime, especially with his uh, bipolarness and uh, crazy proposals. But uh, Wyoming, a very big state, somebody you're going to need who's really big in agriculture, an America First candidate that can emphasize that, as well as somebody who would support traditional religious values and have good optics that could appeal to some of the Mormon voters. So that's it for Wyoming. Uh, Illinois 16th, Adam Kissinger, I think he'd lose his primary to pretty much anybody. Looking at his district, it's it's roughly 90% white, uh, middle class to, to working class largely. It is a district, um, if you look at the, the lean here, it voted for Trump in 2016 by 17%. Uh, probably voted for Trump by the same margin this time, if not even heavier for Donald Trump. Uh, looking at this district, um, it is more exurban. Chicago has a little bit of, you know, the Rockford area in it kind of goes down uh, to a more rural part of the state. It's one of the more Republican areas surrounding Chicago. This should be an easy win for any Republican. It's best to get the most America first candidate that you can if you are going to run in Illinois 16th District. Kinzinger has been arguably the worst Republican when it comes to the anti-Trump sentiment post-election. He would likely be the first one to go in a primary. Um, so that's it for Illinois 16th. Um, now we're going to move on to California. California's 21st, David Valadeo. 
um, the Republican representative from Hanford. He's you know very big in agriculture. He's also um, fairly well liked by the Hispanic community. Now this is a little bit of a tricky one. It's going to be very difficult to primary Valadeo. He is at number one on the priority list because if you look at the the district that he serves, it's a D plus five district. Uh, Hillary Clinton won it by 16 points. Trump did better this time around. Biden only won the district by 11 points or so. But at the same time, the district has been, you know, trending blue lately. And the Republican Party and the Republican candidates that typically win this district are not necessarily Trumpian. If you are going to primary Valadeo, do it with somebody like Mike Garcia, Hispanic candidate, Republican, surprisingly, you know, America first for the district that he represents. Uh, other than that, I, I really believe that Valadeo is unlikely to lose a primary. Not saying that because I, I want him to win, but because it's probably the case given uh, the district's makeup, especially the Republican voters within that district. So um, Ohio 16th, this was a shocking one, a very white working class area and a place in Ohio where Donald Trump uh, won by 15 and 16 points the past couple election cycles. Um, that was not the case in 2008 where McCain won the district by just 2% and when Mitt Romney won the district by just 8%. So Trump making massive improvements among working class whites in the state of Ohio. And then you have former uh, Indianapolis Colts wide receiver turned politician Anthony Gonzalez decide to vote to impeach the president. Uh, well, it seems like he'll be an easy candidate to primary out of there, uh, given the fact that it is a very Trumpian district. You want the most America first candidate possible that can stress immigration restrictionism as well as protectionism, uh, especially given the, the makeup of the district in suburban uh, Cleveland. So that's it for Ohio's 16th, Washington's third, and uh, Washington's fourth. These are both districts here. Washington's third, uh, looking at the election results, voted for Donald Trump by four. He voted for Trump by seven in 2016, Romney by two in 2012. Washington's fourth voted for Trump by a, a decent margin. These are different districts here. This, you could put a Trumpian candidate in this district, uh, maybe even a Hispanic Trumpian candidate. A lot of the uh, Hispanic uh, population there is Republican. If you were to run a, uh, you know, America first Hispanic candidate that could, you know, draw out some lower propensity voters in the primary, and they could do very well in the district uh, in the general, but it is a very Republican area. A lot of the Hispanics and Washington's fourth do vote Republican. Um, Washington's third is a little bit of a different story. It's actually a much whiter district, much more uh, upper class suburban district, um, but at the same time, it is a district that you could say has been moving away from uh, the Republicans for a while. This is a district that uh, is an R plus four district. It could go for the Democrats in, in a blue wave election. But looking at this, what the type of candidate that you'd need in uh, Washington's third is a candidate with very good optics. Look at the household income, largely suburbanites, uh, upper class individuals live there, uh, largely um, white suburbanites as well. You're going to need a candidate that has good optics. You're also going to need a candidate maybe that could pull over some, some voters in a primary, maybe local issues, talk about potential uh, environmentalism. It's obviously in Washington. That's the state that's uh, big up there. If they can you know, communicate a, a right-leaning environmentalist message uh, to counter the left's environmentalist message, that would be very interesting moving forward because that's what the Republicans have to do to compete in places like Oregon, Washington, even Alaska at times. So that's really what you would need to do in Washington's third. Um, the last one is New York's 24th. This one is a district that encompasses Syracuse and parts of upstate New York. Uh, it is a district that votes for Republican John Katko at the uh, representative district level. However, it is D, D plus three uh, district and it voted for Hillary Clinton by four points, although that is down from when Obama was winning the district by 15 points in 2008 and 2012. So in terms of a candidate you would need to win here, I would stress the economic uh, facts of Trumpism. Stick to talking about things like protectionism, if you can find a candidate that can do that. Um, immigration restrictionism, as long as they're bringing good optics into the equation, should do very well. 
And if they're able to do that, I think that they probably could end up winning, especially if it is a red wave election. But I think the primary, they'd be very successful and they would be successful in the general because we are factoring that in as well. You're going to have to find the local issues, the issues that Trump supported that are popular in certain places, and you're going to have to run with it. And if you're able to do that, you'll be able to win the primary. And you'll be able to win the general because a lot of, of actual conservatives are very fed up with the Republican establishment right now. And they're going to pay in the primaries. And we'll see what happens. Uh, but it's going to be very interesting the next couple of years. I wanted to drop a video on this talking about the primary challengers, the, the types of candidates that you would need to win these districts. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. Become a member. Donate to the Patreon or subscribe. Star links in description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.